In this video, we'll walk through the financial statements section. One note here is that NYFC does not save any of the data that you enter this into this tool. So everything you enter here is private, but if you refresh the page or close out your screen, you will lose the data that you've entered. Just something to note before you get started. So if we scroll down, basically there's three sections here. And the first is entering your personal income and your farm's income. The second is a personal balance sheet where you put your assets and liabilities. And the third is a business balance sheet where same thing, you put your business assets and liabilities. And after that, it'll pop out some metrics for you. In this example, I've already walked through and entered some information here, but we could talk through it a little bit first. So the personal income section, we divide out into farm income and non-farm income in case you have an off-farm job and you wanna look at your income in, in two different ways. You could also look at the farm independently of your off-farm income and look at your metrics that way in case that is a meaningful comparison for you. This net farm income section is like a income statement for your farm, but it is an income statement net of interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And this box explains why we do it that way. One tip for using this section is I entered the gross sales and the operating expenses as individual line items here. But if you've already done your income statement separately, you might want to just enter the net income here in this box and leave the rest of these boxes, the expense boxes, empty if you don't want to go through and enter each number. Um, essentially, you're just trying to make this number that calculates on its own equal to your net income. Another thing to note here is this owner's draw box. So you may understand this already, but some farmers might draw money directly out of their business instead of taking a salary or in addition to taking a salary and that's called an owner's draw and you just want to note that if you're taking a salary you don't want to put the owner's draw here you want to enter your salary as part of your personal income your farm income so just a note to not double report your income okay next section is personal balance sheet and things are mostly self-explanatory here. In the personal liabilities box, you just wanna make sure to remember to put the number of months remaining on your debt payments. The calculator does divide up liabilities based on current liabilities versus long-term liabilities. So it's important to know how much of this is coming due in the next year rather than over the term after one year. And the business balance sheet, again, pretty standard documents here. Note that the calculator auto-generates the long-term notes payable and the short-term notes payable based on the property scenario you've entered. So it'll tell you how much is due in this next year on your mortgage and how much is due after the next year. Okay, and entering all that information brings us to this affordability outlook. And these are ratios that any lender is going to look at when they're judging your credit worthiness for a loan. Let's take a closer look at some of these financial ratios. So just like in other parts of the calculator, if you hover over a term, it'll tell you more about it. In this section, it's particularly important because it tells you how the ratio is calculated and strategies for improving this ratio if you find that you need improvement. So this first one, debt to income ratio, explains your repayment capacity. So for a lender, in order to give you a loan, they have to have confidence that you'll be able to pay it back. And debt to income ratio is a commonly used one for them to understand how confident they are in you. In this scenario, 36% means that this person would be using 36% of their income to pay off all of their debts. So that includes mortgage payments for a given year, your student loan payments, your car payments. So that's actually a pretty good place to be in, to be using about a third of your income to service all of your debts that you owe. 
The second section here on leverage and solvency uses the debt to asset ratio. And we've split it up between your personal finances and your business finances, because often there is a big difference there, especially at different places in your life. When you're younger, you might have a worse debt to asset ratio because you haven't had time to build up an asset base and you might have still lingering debts from paying college tuition, for instance. So debt to asset ratio is used to understand how much stress a, a person is putting on their asset base in, in servicing debt payments. So of course, the more assets that you build up, the more that you can take risk, the more that you can um, take on debt. And a lender will use this to just understand how much risk you're taking, how much stress you're putting on that, the assets that you've been able to build up. This third ratio here, the current ratio, is a measure of your liquidity or your business's liquidity. And it's essentially just your current assets divided by your current liabilities. So liquidity is the degree to which a given asset can be converted into cash. So something like a, I don't know, a cow is not that liquid. In order to convert it into cash, you know, there's processing, there's a whole marketing aspect, whereas um, your accounts payable account, the the invoices that, that your um, that your customers owe you, those that's a lot more liquid kind of um, asset could, because that could be converted into cash any day as soon as they pay you. So this measure is just trying to understand, okay, maybe you have a lot of assets, but are those assets actually liquid? Um, and can they be used to pay off your liabilities? Or do you have, um, or are you asset heavy in, in ways that you actually can't use that money? So this last ratio here, return on assets, is measuring profitability. And it just should be noted that agriculture is a pretty low profit industry in terms of, maybe you all understand that, a pretty low profit industry in terms of return on assets. So it is very reliant on having a large number of assets, usually to run a, a profitable business. And so you'll see that the the ratio at only 8%, meaning for every $1,000 in assets, you only make $80 in income, is actually a, a really good um, return on assets metric in the ag industry. So this is just telling a lender, based on based on your, your income, um, are you making enough money for the amount of assets that you have? So those are the four kinds of metrics that we've included in the calculator, and we hope they'll be a good start to helping you understand your business and your creditworthiness as a loan candidate.